Okay, we are recording, so. Too many You look so confused. The game of the week today, the game of the week is the dogs. George Bulldogs against Notre Dame, which they're probably going to win easily. Because Notre Dame is overrated, I think. All right, so write it down. I'll blow it up. Wait, we did one like it. I don't think we did this one. We did one like it. Yeah, we did one like it. We did do that one. We did do this one? Yeah. It was like one of the first ones we did. Okay, well, I don't know who sent it. Maybe an online student that don't watch the videos. I don't know. I don't know who sent it. Did y'all realize I don't know who sent it? So, I don't know. So, don't say I'm talking bad about you. All right, what does it say? F composed of G. So that means I've got to rewrite F with a F of X is equal to blank squared, and then I'm going to plug G into, so that's 25 minus X. And, of course, we all know that when you take the square root and you square it, that cancels the radical. So your answer is 25 minus X. Okay, so that's F composed of G. So let's do G composed of F. Because I'm going to just go through and do all of them because I don't know what it's asking for, but I'm going to do all of them. So, so let's do this is F composed of G. F F composed of G, and then G composed of F is going to be G, we're going to rewrite with big, big parentheses, so the square root of 25 minus parentheses squared, okay, I'm sorry, parentheses, not squared, and then we're going to plug in X squared, And that's going to give us, technically, you cannot, that's x plus, that's 5 plus x, 5 minus x. So you can't take the square root of that, all right? So that's going to be 25 minus x squared, or the square root of 5 plus x times 5 minus x. That's shortcut number three. A lot of people say, well, you can take the square root of 25 and x squared. Yes, but you can't because it's what? It's a, it's a minus or a plus. If you have a minus or a plus here, you can't take the square root of both. You can't do that because it's a shortcut. F composed of F. I'm going to rewrite F with a big set of parentheses, and I'm going to plug F, uh, F into it, and that's going to give us what? x to the fourth. And then g composed of g is going to be square root 25 minus parentheses and then we're going to plug in the square root of 25 minus x and that's you can't do anything else with that. Just leave it like that. Is it a test question? Yes. Do I want you to go all four of them? No. Um, so make sure you can do all four of them, but I doubt very seriously I'm going to ask you. Now, what about the domain? What is the, what is the domain of 25 minus x? All real numbers because x is to the what power? First power. So you don't have a radical or a what? A fraction. Yes, sir. Okay, so in the test... Put it in a different format than a month or two, but it's still the right answer. Will you be able to go back and like? Yeah, I can do that with challenge questions, but try to. I, I, I want you to. I want you to try to do as much as you can, um, to to follow the directions. That does say interval notation. Okay, if it doesn't specify. Then I will take the answer R for all real numbers, uh, but. Usually, if they want you to type in all real numbers, they will say type in an R. So that one, if you if this was a test question and you put all real numbers, I would not mark it correct because what does the direction say? It's 
notation. Interval notation. So make sure you read the directions. And if the directions are not there, then it's an open question. Okay. Okay. Do what I want. All right. Yeah. Do what you want. Like most women do. Like most women do. All right. So. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh go back to. Now, I gave you a one, a one or a two. So I'm going to move it up a little bit and give you a two or a three on the scale of completing the square. So, no, it's 3.1 through 3.4. 3.1 through 3.4, that's basically completing the square. Okay, now we went over two, one or two questions. How many did we go over? One? One. Okay, and then I went over one after class. Nobody stayed, so y'all suck. All right, so I'm going to go over another one today to refresh your memory. This is like on a scale from one to ten, a one or a two. So let's, let's go with x squared plus 8x minus 2 is equal to zero. Now I went ahead and plugged in zero for y. Now I want you to complete the square. Two, the, add the blanks. B divided by two, square it. And then shortcut number one or number two on the left and then solve. Find your vertex. Yeah, well. <laughs> I'll go ahead and start y'all. X squared plus 8X plus blank is equal to 2 plus blank. 8 divided by 2 is what? 4. 4 squared is? 16. And that 16 goes there and there. And now you got shortcut number 1 because of that. you got shortcut number 1 on the left. And then look at your notes to see what to do after that. Oh. Remember, you got to get your vertex and you got to get your x-intercept. And you got to sketch it. I would just quit if I was y'all. There's too much. Yeah, I think I am. Good, good, good. Okay, so what is the shortcut? Number one, what does the shortcut produce right here? Oh my lord, somebody got it. Oh my, I'm feel faint. You're supposed to ignore the shortcuts. You're not supposed to learn them. Oh. Bernie is not going to take care of you. Bernie is going to get mad at you. Okay. 2 plus 16 is 18. Because you're raising the bar. You're not supposed to raise the bar. What are you supposed to do to the bar? Lower it. You're supposed to lower it. <laughs> so the government can control you. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> and you shouldn't read. You shouldn't read books. How do you expect the government to control you if you keep getting smart? God. All right, so I'm going to put this. What's my vertex? My vertex, I'm going to highlight this. And I'm going to highlight this. And I'm going to take the opposite of both. So my vertex, if I just want to find my vertex, and are y'all listening? Because y'all talking while I'm talking. It's starting, to, it's starting to perplex me. Okay, vertex. Negative 4 and what? Negative 18. Negative 18. Now that's if you just want to find the vertex and plot the point. What if they ask you for the intercept? If they ask you for the intercept or the standard form, you put an f of x in front of it. And then you, then you bring the 18 over. So that's x plus 4 to the second power minus 18. Now, if they ask you for the vertex here, 
You take the opposite, which is your horizontal shift. What does that mean? Left or right four? Left. Left four. And bring this down. Either way, do you get the same vertex? Yes. But you have to remember this, and I'm going to highlight this in Verde. You've got to remember that the homework, the standardized test, any kind of may ask you for this form. Okay? I don't care. I want you to just draw the graph. Now, we bring this over here and we're going to solve for x. x plus 4 quantity squared is equal to 18. So that's going to be the square root of both sides. x plus 4 is equal to positive or negative. Well, let's think a minute. The square root of 16 is what? So what do you think the square root of 18 is? 4.2? So somebody take 18. Somebody give me the square root of 18. What do you get? In your calculator. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. I'm not going to fuss at you for not having your calculator. That's a good thing. But somebody that does have a calculator, tell me what the square root of 18 is. 4.24. Okay, so I got 4.2, it's in the right area. Now, let's go ahead and talk about this. This is an approximate. Approximate means that you used well, your brain or you used your calculator. Okay, that's what approximate means. If it asks for exact, exact means they want you to keep the what? The radical. Exact would be I don't know where that mark came from. <clears throat> exact, I'm going to just write it in blue. Square root of 9 times square root of 2, 3, square root of 2. And that's called exact. Okay, make sure you make a note of that right now. And make sure you highlight that, those two little clouds. Highlight that because your directions may ask, or exact or approximate. And you keep going. In this case, I just want approximate because what are we doing to the graph? Are we plotting it or are we sketching it? We're sketching it. So that's all I want. I want an approximate. So x is equal to positive or negative 4.2 minus 4. What's $4.20 minus $4? 20 cents. So that's one x intercept. What's negative four dollars and negative four dollars and twenty cents? Negative eight point two. And there's your two x intercept. What's your y intercept? So now I want you to graph or sketch the graph. So go ahead and sketch. Shouldn't take you too long to sketch it. And then I want you to write down five things. Domain, range, increasing, decreasing, and line of symmetry. I don't know what all that is. Okay, just, just, just go ahead and give up and quit. Yeah. Quit watching porn on your... Uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's a joke. He's not watching porn on his laptop. It's a joke. And for those of you that don't know what that is, porn is bad stuff that's on the internet, okay? I'm offended. He said porn in class. <laughs> All right, so what is... Okay, let's go ahead and do my vertex first. My vertex... Is negative 4, negative 18. And my y intercept is negative 2. My point 2 and negative 8. Well, that's negative 4. So negative 8 is going to be down here. What's my domain? Well, my domain is all real numbers. Why? Because it's x squared function. Is there a radical or a fraction in this function? No. So your domain's going to be all real numbers. 
What's the range? From negative 18 to infinity. Negative 18 to infinity. What's your plane doing from left to right? It's decreasing to negative 4. So decreasing from negative 4, I'm sorry, from negative infinity to 4, negative 4, and increasing from negative 4 to what? Infinity. infinity. Line of symmetry always goes through the x. So line of symmetry is x is equal to negative 4. Make sure you can give me those five things after you sketch the graph. Increasing, decreasing, domain, range. And we went over that in what? Unit 1. Y'all starting to see where this is tying in to each other? Sure. So by the time we get to the end of Unit 2, you're going to be able to take the Unit 1 test in a few minutes. It's not going to be difficult at all. And you feel good about yourself. Now this is a 1 or a 2. Now I'm going to bump it up to a 3 or a 4. You ready? Well, that's not what I thought. I just don't think I'm... There we go. Okay. So here we go. X squared. Minus or plus 4X plus 7 is equal to 0. Okay, go ahead and start on it. It says, my phone says, shh. My phone says 934. I'll give you all two minutes to get started on it. If you can't do it in two minutes, you might as well just go ahead and drop the class. two minutes. So, x squared plus 4x plus blank is equal to negative 7 plus blank. So it made a negative right there. So I don't know if it's going to cause any problems. I don't think it is. 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 squared is 4. Yep, it's going to cause problems. What shortcut do we have here? 1 or 2? Exactly. Number 1, x plus 2 quantity squared 
is equal to negative what? Okay, so we got a vertex of negative 2, comma what? 3. That's our vertex. Now, that's all we need, but we need to make the people happy. So we need to rewrite it as f of x is equal to x plus 2, quantity squared, plus 3. And if they ask us for the vertex there, take the opposite of this. What is, what's the horizontal shift here? Negative. Left, 2. So that's negative 2. And bring this down, which is 3. So you get your vertex no matter what. Now we're going to take this over here, and we get x plus 2 quantity squared is equal to negative 3. Take the square root. Uh-oh. What's the problem? You can't, do, you can't take the square root of what? Negative. So you just quit, right? No. You do two things. One is... You take your handy dandy red or pink highlighter and you're going to highlight this guy right here. That's called, at that point, when you're, when you're using the radicand, it's called the radicand, but that's when you're just using math, okay? When you're just saying the square root of 25, 25 is the radicand. But when this tells you about the x-intercepts, it's called the discriminant. That sounds very expensive. Yeah. yeah, it is. I don't think we should say it. Discriminant is when it deals with the x what? Intercepts. If it is positive, you're going to have two x intercepts. If it is negative, you're going to have no x intercepts. Why? Because you can't take the square root of a negative. And if it's zero, then that means you have one x-intercept. Okay, so that's important. Does this thing facing down never touch Not yet. No, we ain't got there yet. The only thing this one's doing is floating. It's floating in the first or second quadrant because it's not touching the x-axis. Now, you need to remember this. So that's very important. So we need to highlight that for those people that don't understand what important means. It means it's going to be on the test. Okay? Discriminant. Is radicand and discriminant the same? Yes. But discriminant means that it's dealing with the x-intercepts. It's not just a number. Radicand means it's just a number, like the square root of 25 is 5. So, you can stop right here and say no x-intercepts, but standardized testing, homework, and testing wants you to put it in terms of i, which is the square root of negative 1. So I'm going to go over here in red, and I'm going to put in here the square root of negative 1 is equal to i, and i squared is equal to negative 1. That's your rule for i. And I'm going to break this square root of negative 3, I'm going to break it up into two radicals. Okay, so that's going to be x plus 2 is equal to the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 3. And I'm taking the square root of both sides, so that square is gone. So I don't need to write that square, because I'm taking the square root. I've already took the square root. There we go. X plus 2 is equal to, what is the square root of negative 1? I. I. And that square root of 3, you can't take the square root of 3, so you just leave it. So your answer is X equal to negative 2 plus or minus i times the square root of 3, or negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 3, i. But be careful where you put that i and put it behind the radical. Make sure there's some kind of cutoff, and that is the x-intercepts. Meaning, if you see i, that means there are no 
x intercept. Now, this is what 3.1 is about. Okay, so you should be able to start with 3.1 questions in the homework because that's what it's about. What happens if you get I? Now, let's go ahead and draw it. Now, notice I'm only drawing the first and second quadrants. Why? Because I know it's floating in the first and second quadrant because I don't have any x intercepts. And I know it's opening which way? It's opening up, so it can't be in, down in the bottom. All right, so my, so my uh, y-intercept is 7. And my vertex is negative 2, positive 3. So there is my parabola. And of course, all real numbers... From negative, from positive three to infinity is my range. Decreasing from negative infinity to negative two, and increasing from negative two to what? To infinity. And your line of symmetry goes through negative two. Go to five. Five. No. no. This is a three. This is a three. Don't worry. It's it's don't get complicated enough. There you go. Thanks. So much. That's a two or a three. So let's go to a three or a three or a four. Or two uh, sorry, two or three, three or four, whatever. We're gonna go to the next stage. Hey, Paul, please. I know how to do all this, right? Okay. How do you get the domain? What was that? All real numbers? All real, because this is a square. Okay, makes sense. And anytime you got a square, first power, second power, third power, fourth power, unless the teacher or the direction specify the domain, it's going to be all real numbers. Because you can plug anything into that. Okay, now this is a 30-minute class, so y'all keep me posted. I think I got 15 minutes. Or okay, yeah, okay. This all makes sense. All right, so let's do it there. All right, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and discourage all of you now. So x squared. Are all these going to be like that? 3x. I'm just going to give you another easy one. This is minus 1 is equal to 0. What difficulty? This is about a 4 or 5. Somebody tell me what the problem is. 3 over 2. That gives us a what? So might as well all of you should what? Quit. Do not. What you do not do is reach for a calculator because that will make it much more difficult. So you're going to have to divide three halves no, by two so and then square it. We're going to keep it the same. <laughs> you know, three squared is like nine and two squared is like four. That's some really hard math. But you got to divide it by two. So here we go x squared plus 3 half x plus blank is equal to 1 plus blank. Here we go. 3 divided by 2 and what? Square it. That's equal to 9 over what? Now that's some hard math, y'all. That's some really hard math. Oh my gosh, look over here. Look what we got to do there. That's, that's going to be awful. Because I got to change that one into four fours. Gosh. So, which shortcut is this? One. And it's x plus what? 3 over 2 squared. Wow, I am amazed. X, don't you know you're not supposed to answer? You're supposed to say, I don't know. Because it's fractions. Three halves. Somebody's going to beat you up outside. All right. 
equals what is 4 plus 9? 13 not fourths. All right, finish it. <laughs> Don't worry, by the time I get through with unit three, I mean chapter three, you're going to be doing these left and right because I'm going to bang you upside the head with these until you either quit or you get good at them. And all of it is nothing but procedure. What's my vertex? Um, negative three halves. Negative 13, negative 13 fourths. I'm going to write it, y, or f of x, is equal to x plus 3 halves, quantity squared minus 13 halves. I'm not going to write my vertex again. I think y'all y'all know how to get the vertex from that form right there. It's the same as this. Okay, so now I'm going to go over here and solve for my x-intercepts. x plus 3 halves. Quantity squared is equal to 13 fourths. Now this is some real hard math again, y'all. I hope y'all can do it. X plus 3 halves is equal to positive or negative square root of 13 over what? That's some real hard math there. So I think we should go ahead and realize that if we can't do the square root of 4, then we should hang it up. No, you're supposed to look at this and not know what to do. That's what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to say, well, the square root of 13 over 4 is square root of 13 over 2. Oh, this is, okay, this is not as hard. It's not very difficult. I see where we're going with this. Okay, now, I'm going to say x is equal to positive or negative square root of 13 minus 3 over what? 2, because are these common denominators? So I could bring those over and put them over in one denominator. Now, this is the answer probably that they want in your notebook, hope, homework, test, whatever, but that's not what I want. Because what I want you to do, I want you to be able to sketch graphs. So I want you to plot, oh, oh somebody's car must be broken. I don't think we have, we don't have people towed. So that must be somebody's car to break down. That's sad. I hate that. All right. So here we go. What's the square root of 13? Well, let's go over here and interpolate. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 16 is 4. 3.5 is in the middle. 9 to 16 is 7. The square root of 12.5 is 3.5. So I'm going to bet you a dollar to a donut is 3.6. X is equal to positive or negative 3.6 minus 3 over 2. Okay, here we go with some hard math again. What's $3.60 minus $3? What's 60 cent divided by 2? That is some, that is some hard math. <laughs> What is, you owe somebody $3.60, you owe somebody $3, you owe $6.60. What's half of $6.60? $3.30. That's some hard math there. Now, beside the shortcuts, tell me where you see any math, beside the shortcuts, that is above sixth grade math. There is none. You're taking the square root. You're down here. You're adding and what? Subtracting and you're dividing. It is a sin that you graduate high school and you don't know how to do completing the square root. So don't raise your hand and say, I don't know how to do it. That's not what I'm saying. This is nothing but 100% pure math except for the shortcut over there. That's it. And we've got high school students that went through 12 years of school and went through four, several years, several semesters of algebra and math, and they can't do this. Somebody didn't get their money's worth. 
So I'm going to, I don't know, let's see, where is my, here is my, that's negative one. My vertex is negative one and a half. And negative what? Three and one fourth? It's down there somewhere. Four, we're going there three times. Yeah, three and one fourth. No, that's negative. Hold on. Three and one fourth would be down here. Sorry. Well, that's negative one. There. And x intercept number one is 0.3. So that's right there. You can't go very far from 0.3. And negative 3.3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. And now you can do all real numbers. What's your. What are you doing, Nicole? what I tell you if you need to text your mama? Go in the hallway. All right. I gotta pick on you since you didn't bring no food. Okay. All right. What's uh, what's the range from what? Negative thirteen fourths to what? Infinity. Decreasing from negative infinity to negative three halves. Increasing from negative three halves to what? Infinity. Line of symmetry is three halves. Now, I want you to tell me how difficult this is. It shouldn't be difficult for you. Now, I guarantee you there's somebody in this room, Oconee, or Pendleton that's never seen this before, and that's a sin. Don't say nothing. You don't have to say words, but it's sad. All right. But I guarantee you if I ask you to do the quadratic formula and to rely on that little idiot box, I guarantee you half of y'all could do that. And then they wonder why people can't run cash registers and spell mom backwards. That's why. All right. So let's do it there. I know. Let's see. What time is it before y'all blow up? Uh, yep. No, I got five minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and finish today. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you do not. Because at that vertex, are you going up or down? You're going neither. And that's the, some people some people argue about that, but you're talking about a millisecond that you're actually not going up, not going down. So that's why they don't put a bracket. Some books do, some books don't. Okay. All right. Uh, now you should be able to start working, and this is the online class as well as this class. You should be able to start working on 3.1 and maybe a little 3.2. But it may be jumbled up for you because we haven't finished everything yet. When we get to the, the level, difficulty level of 10, you'll be able to do anything in Chapter 3 homework. Everybody with me? So if you want to experiment and go ahead and start playing with 3.1 and start sending me some questions and start on 3.2 and maybe send me, that's fine. I wouldn't go past 3.2 yet because you're going to get into difficulties that we haven't covered yet and you get you don't know how to factor out a common term and all that so out of complete and square you know how to factor out a common term the factor out a common term with complete and square is totally different so all right i'm going to shut down the